A barrier triangle is a five-wave structure labeled as a wave A, B, C, D, E and can appear in any of the structures that I wrote in the box over here. Wave B of a zigzag, wave X, wave Y of a sideways double combo WXY, wave Z of a sideways triple combo WXYXZ, and a wave 4. Looking at the rules and the guidelines, your wave B and D are most commonly similar in price compared to the origin of your wave A, creating a support or resistance area. This is the origin of your wave A and you can see that your wave B and D are quite similar in price. However, your wave B is not allowed to take the origin of your wave A and move below the origin of wave A in this particular example and wave D is not allowed to take out wave B. Sometimes there is a bit of a discussion if a wick below, in this particular case wave B or the origin of wave A is allowed, but I personally prefer to stick to the triangle rules that say that if you move below the origin of wave A with wave B in this particular barrier triangle case, that's an invalidation and same if wave D is moving below wave B. Now all of the waves in a barrier triangle have to be part of the zigzag family. Four out of the five waves have to be a simple zigzag structure in a wave ABC535 to the upside or an ABC535 to the downside. If one of the waves is a more complex structure, it is by far most common for wave C or D to be that complex structure in either a double or a triple zigzag. Wave E by itself can also become a triangle to extend this range even longer in time, but it is very rare. What is common for wave E, however, is to either overshoot or not reach the AC trend line, where overshooting is quite common, creating a bit of a fake out before then moving back into the triangle and move the opposite way. Oftentimes, in a barrier triangle, the volume will move down as the pattern is evolving. The invalidation in a barrier triangle is changing as we get more information about this triangle. Once you start wave A, the invalidation is the origin of wave A, and when wave A is finished, you also have an invalidation being the top or the bottom of your wave A. Once wave B is finished, then the invalidation is going to move from the origin of A to the wave B pivot. Once your wave C is finished, then the invalidation of your wave A is going to move towards the wave C pivot. Once wave D is finished, the invalidation of wave B is going to move towards the high or the low of your wave D. And once your wave E is finished, that is the moment you move your invalidation of wave C to the wave E pivot. After wave E, the invalidations at the low will disappear as you then expect continuation. The target area for your wave C and your wave E is similar, with the common target area being between the golden pocket and the 786 and the 0 0.5 to the 886 is an uncommon target. For wave C, you pull the fibs from the start to the end of wave B. For wave E, you pull the fibs from the start to the end of wave D. Wave B and Wave D don't really have a specific target, but should create a horizontal support resistance area with the origin of your Wave A, so they should move low or high enough to be quite similar to the origin of your Wave A. When comparing the different wave structures in a barrier triangle, it is also important to consider the vertical price movement of each wave, and what I mean is that your Wave A is covering about the same amount of price as your Wave B your wave C is covering around the same amount of price as your wave D. So that increases the probabilities for wave B to be quite similar in time compared to your wave A and for your wave D to be quite similar in time compared to your wave C. In that case, you take a FIP time from the start to the end of wave A and you double click over here and toggle on the one fifth time and you do the same for your wave D but now you take a fifth time from the start to the end of your wave C. What you can also see however is that your wave B is bigger than your wave C and your wave D is bigger than your wave E. Therefore wave C and wave E have a higher probability of being shorter than the one-to-one -one FIP time compared to the previous wave structure. So for wave C, you take a FIP time from the start to the end of your wave B, and for wave E, you take a FIP time from the start 
to the end of wave D and the probabilities are lower that a wave C or a wave E is going to finish on top or after the one to one. A minimum time target would be the 0.382 FIP time as it is very rare for a structure to finish before the 0.382. However, for a wave B, C, D and E it is no problem to finish after the one to one FIP time, it's all probabilities. If, however, a structure is continuing to range until the 4, 5, 6 fit time, it significantly reduces the probabilities you're looking at a barrier triangle. An important tip that I like to give you is to only consider a barrier triangle after your wave D is in. Up till that point, other scenarios most likely have a higher probability, for example, a flat and a WXY. Starting with a flat structure, we have to think about a regular flat because in the barrier triangle, your wave B is not allowed to take the origin of your wave A. And in a regular flat, that's also a possibility because for a regular flat, the minimum target for your wave B is the 0.9 Fibonacci taken from the start to the end of your wave A, which means it can turn around before taking out the origin of your wave A. In this case, that's exactly what we're looking for. And then we want to see a five wave structure to the upside in wave C ending above wave A, which would invalidate a triangle because instead of a three wave move and then moving to the downside again, we see a five wave impulsive structure taking out the high of your wave A. In a WXY, we're looking for a bigger three wave corrective structure instead of a barrier triangle where you have a zigzag in W, a zigzag in X and then either a flat or a triangle inside wave Y. The flat in this case is also a regular flat. A three wave A, a three wave B, where wave B does not take out the origin of wave A, and then we're looking for a five wave C towards the upside, moving above this pivot, invalidating a barrier triangle. When considering a triangle inside wave Y, there's two important differences with a barrier triangle, and that is your wave D here as well as time. Let me explain. So in a WXY with a triangle in wave Y, we have a zigzag W, zigzag X, and then a triangle in wave Y is going to be a wave A, B, C, D, E. But as you can see, your wave D is then failing as you continue to the downside, increasing probabilities for a barrier triangle. But more importantly is time. Because when we think about time, your wave Y compared to your wave W is most commonly ending between the 0.618 and the 1.618 fifth time taken from the start to the end of W to the end of X. It is no problem for wave Y to be longer going to the 2 or the 3 fifth time, no problemo. But the moment you're going towards that 3, 4, 5, 6 fifth time, it starts to significantly reduce the probabilities you're looking at a wave Y. And when we do think about a triangle in a wave Y, your waves are are preferably shorter in time and price quicker compared to a barrier triangle which can take a lot more time. This is everything that you have to know about a barrier triangle. If there are any questions please make sure to ask.